Since my channel is mostly about air guns, I've tried to stay out of the gun control debate that has been ensuing for the last month or so. But I received a lot of emails about it, so I wanted to go ahead and cover two key items that I have not seen really addressed much uh, in other videos. So the first gun I'm going to show you is this Glock 19. This was affected under the original assault weapons ban and would be again if the new one is uh, instated, uh, primarily because it has um, a 15 round magazine, or at least the capability to hold a 15 round magazine. And um, this is the same gun that's carried often by police officers, and uh, many people like them for self-protection, including myself. Okay, so the second gun I want to show you is this Ruger ITAC. Now, this should really bring things into perspective for you. This gun would be in violation of the assault weapons ban for at least four different reasons. I'll start with reason number one, is because it has a folding stock. Now, I'm sure somehow or another making it easier to store somehow also makes it easier to slaughter thousands of people, but uh, <clears throat> that would have been in violation. The fact that it has a flash suppressor also puts it in violation. Um, again, I suppose that somehow makes it easier for me to slaughter hundreds or, you know, whatever people. Uh, another reason it would be banned is because it has a pistol grip. Um, that, again, somehow must make it easier to slaughter tons of people. <clears throat> and then, of course, the last violation that it has, at least that I know of, is the fact that it has a 25-round detachable magazine. Now, I mean, at least there is some logic to that, but the other three issues are entirely cosmetic. So, the really sad part about this rifle is that it uses 22 caliber bullets. So it's considered a very, very weak firearm. I mean, it's at the very low end of the spectrum but it would be banned mostly for all of the cosmetic reasons. It's almost like saying we should ban sports cars because they're really fast, but only ban cars that look like sports cars and don't, you know, even though there are sedans and pickup trucks out there that can go just as fast as many sports cars. So, again, all a cosmetic uh, type ban. The other thing is, a criminal would never, ever want this gun. Um, <clears throat> they would never choose this gun to commit a crime. Uh, for one, it's just it's not powerful enough. But the main thing, the main thing is it's just too expensive. I paid over six hundred dollars for this gun, and I paid most of that cost is simply for the appearance, which I liked. I think that it looks cool, and I was willing to pay for it. But for a criminal, it has absolutely no benefit to them, and uh, it's hard to conceal. Even with the folding stock, it's still hard to conceal this. So no criminal would want to use this. Now, let's put this in perspective. See this? This is a Walther P22. And it also uses the same 22 caliber uh, round as the assault rifle I just showed you. And yet this would not have been banned under the previous assault weapons ban. Um, and it's half the price, much easier to conceal, and just as deadly. In fact, the Virginia Tech killer used this exact gun, uh, among others, to kill people with. So it's obviously very effective. The whole assault weapons ban is a joke. Did you know that more people die every year from being attacked by a hammer than being shot with an assault weapon? That's how rarely they are used in crimes. And Passing an assault weapons ban would be analogous to saying that you want to curb a pollution, so you're going to ban cars that pollute the most. So instead of attacking cars like SUVs and giant pickup trucks that are the root of the problem, instead, let's focus our efforts on 1940s antique vehicles because they have no smog controls. Now that sounds great and logical until you realize, of course, it would have zero effect on pollution um, but it would, of course, piss off a bunch of people that like antique cars. Um, and that's exactly what the assault weapons ban will do. It will have zero effect on crime, just as it had zero effect on crime when it was instituted back in the 90s under the Clinton administration. But it will piss off a bunch of gun owners like me um, who like to have assault weapons. Or so I've been having arguments uh, for several weeks now with some uh, anti-gun type people and uh, we've argued over statistics and laws and history and comparison with other countries and we keep going round and round and round and we just can't seem to find any common ground. 
And the one thing I've realized is that it is very easy to draw the line between those who support more gun control and those who don't. And the line is, is fairly simple. It really boils down to whether that person likes and owns guns or not. So one of the numbers that gets tossed around a lot is this 12,000 gun deaths per year in the United States. Now that number is very flawed and it's really not that high, but I'm not going to take the time to go into that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to give them that number and I'm going to say, okay, there's really 12,000 gun deaths per year in the United States. And they say, now, David, why can't you just give up your guns? You and everybody else, if you would just stop being selfish and give up your guns, you could save 12,000 lives per year. Now, of course, those people would probably be killed by knives or other methods if they didn't have access to guns, but, but let's go ahead and give them that 12,000 number just for the sake of argument. Let's, let's say that's accurate. And they say, David, you don't really need your guns. You just want them. And it's people like you who make guns available, whether, even if by accident, to criminals. And uh, therefore, if you just didn't have them, um, all those lives will be saved. How can you turn a blind eye to those poor kids that were killed in the uh, school shooting recently? You know, don't you want to do something about this? Don't you want to stop it? Aren't you being selfish? How can, you know... Okay, well, here's my answer to that. And I'm going to lay it out as plain day as it can be. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to shed tears over people I don't know. And yes, I am going to turn a blind eye to it. And here's why. There are 32,000 deaths every year caused by motor vehicle accidents in the United States. 32,000. That's a lot more than that 12,000 number. And that 32,000 number is real and verifiable. So I could say, well, why don't we just ban cars? I mean, after all, we don't really need them, just like I don't need my guns. I mean, we can, we can live without cars. We can beef up our public transportation system. We'd also reduce a heck of a lot of pollution. Uh, we'd reduce our dependence upon foreign oil. It's really a win situation for everybody. Um, how can you not want to give up your car? I mean, 32000 per year, a lot of those are children. How can you turn a blind eye? I mean, if you would just give up your car, then... 32,000 lives per year could be saved. And not to mention all the wars fought over oil and, and uh, all the, the sick people who died from pollution. So aren't you being selfish? Or is it that you are willing to turn a blind eye to those who died because you appreciate the freedom of owning a car that much? And that, my friends, is what it really boils down to. Yes. I believe that is the price to pay for citizens being allowed to own guns, just like everyone else believes that is the price paid by having the freedom to own cars. And yes, just like you will look a blind eye to the people who die in car accidents, I'm going to turn a blind eye to the people who die from criminals using guns. And it is a whole lot easier, isn't it, for someone who doesn't own a car or drive a car or want a car, it's very easy for that person to point their finger and say, you should give up your cars because they don't have to give up anything. In the same way, for someone who doesn't own or like guns, it's very easy for them to look at me and say, I need to give up my guns because they don't have anything to lose. And so it's always easy to ask somebody else to give up a right or freedom. It's much more difficult when you're the one who has to make the sacrifice.